So thanks for joining us for Mentality Meets. My name is Peter Larkham. Uh, I created Mentality last year to um, hopefully give everybody a base knowledge of mental health. Now, mental health and mental health illnesses is something that we are much more aware of now than ever before. And here we are with COVID-19, all of us in lockdown, probably experiencing a lot more anxieties than we have done in the past or ever before. Um, and so mentality is designed to help people understand what their normal mental health journey is, and then being able to explore what has shifted, what has changed, and um, where to get help and support. Uh, and so these sessions, the Mentality Meets sessions, are where I meet and talk with people who have lived experience of mental health illnesses. So as a mental health first aid instructor and as a mental health trainer, uh, I don't have lived experience of mental health illnesses, except I am experiencing more anxieties and more worries and more doubts uh, than ever before in my life uh, during this time. So it's really great to be talking with people who have kind of been there before, uh, to hear some of their wisdom and to hopefully navigate more effectively this whole process of COVID-19 and the coronavirus. So we already have people lined up, ready to come. So I'm gonna start allowing people in, but I really hope that you enjoy today's Mentality Meets. We're gonna be meeting Steve Loft and he is just fantastic. So let's get started. So Steve, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Aha, Peter. perfect. How are so you, Steve, right? While I am welcoming more and more people in uh, to this little chat room of ours, um, could you just take a moment and say hi who are you what's your name where you're from uh and just a little bit of an introduction to to you would that be okay yeah that's fine i mean first of all thank you for this opportunity to join this uh, mentality meets i've been watching the other speakers and i've been really inspired by them and uh, i'm the hard hard acts to follow thank you for inviting me and also to all the people that are logging in, uh, there's a few, a lot of people there I recognise. So thanks for taking the time to come in and log in rather than doing what you normally do during the day. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, my background, actually, I'm a, what they used to call, call a lanyard slave. I used to work in a lot of organisations. I qualified as an accountant uh, when I was in my 20s and um, worked for a number of organisations and then ended up at Transport for London around about 17, 18 years ago. And I worked there for about 15 years in the, in the end, but uh, it was during the Olympic year that uh, things got to a little bit of a head and I had a little bit of a meltdown, a, a sort of breakdown. And um, I, I was off work for about eight months and it was eventually diagnosed after about six months as generalized anxiety disorder. Um, once I had that diagnosis, I got quite a lot of good therapy. I was really fortunate because I had a private health insurance with the company and uh, with the help of psychologists and psychiatrists I actually got back to work after eight months and I ended up being at TFL for another five years after that. When I came back I was a sort of I think when most people have therapy you come back a different person you learn a lot about yourself and uh, what I decided was that perhaps uh, working in an office doing finances and quality assurance which is what I was doing at the time wasn't for me anymore so I was, I was sort of thought about doing a second career and so I looked and, and, and eventually joined a, a counselling course night school and, and did those for about three or four years alongside my full-time job. The, um, while I was doing that I also realised that at TfL there was still a, a little bit of a gap in terms of supporting people with mental health issues and problems and challenges so I set up a peer support group and and that started with just a handful of us and I think now they've got like a mailing list of about four or five hundred people there and TfL's really learned from that we 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 got involved with time to change which is why I've got the the t-shirt behind because I've you know my heart's with time to change I you know really enjoyed working with them um I set up the peer support group and um that that grew and grew and they tfl signed the time to change pledge which is time to change the social movement about breaking the stigma and discrimination around mental health and um working with time to change they started seeing what i was doing with the peer support group and asked me to come along and do a few talks 
which I did for their employee masterclasses and other sort of champions groups. And um, once uh, there was an opportunity at TFL for me to leave and I left in 2017 and Time to Change said, would you mind coming and doing some voluntary training with them? And, and that's what I did for about two, two, and two and a half years with the workplace team. I learned a hell of a lot from Time to Change and Aruna, who's I think down there, she's been an amazing mentor in the training side for me. And I've got a lot to thank her for. Um, we did a lot of work around lots and lots of com companies. I think Runa would have the stats, but I think there was four or 500 people that we trained in the end. And I really enjoyed that experience. Then I thought to myself, well, why don't I do this as a freelancer? And, and that's what I've done for the last couple of years. We've got a little team of people that, that go around to workplaces and uh, do training, mental health awareness, stress management, uh, setting up strategies, that sort of thing. And, and I really enjoyed that. Um, and I've still linked in with Time to Change. I do work now more with the community side. And uh, Chris Dahler there, uh, I remember we met uh, doing a uh, Time to Change podcast and she said she wanted to do some stuff with men, uh, but she didn't have an idea what, what, what we could do to get more men champions in the community. And I'd just been in a, a like a vinyl cafe uh, talking to the guy who owned the cafe. And he said to me, or he said, sometimes I don't think I'm selling records, I'm more doing like therapy. And um, that sort of sprung a bell with me that music can be quite a powerful thing. Men, you know, vinyl and records and music is, can, can get men talking, you know, talk about football and cars and all that sort of stuff. But music's quite powerful. So I set up a men music and mental health group. And that's where I met John Salmon, who's uh, one of the speakers collective. And John, uh, Chris Darlow and John were doing some work with Walthamstow, Waltham Forest, and they were short of men to be models for a photography exhibition. And I remember uh, meeting an amazing guy called Pete Myro and uh, walking around with him taking photographs. And I ended up in the exhibition. And um, when, when at the end of the exhibition, they had a launch and they had a talk and they wanted people to come forward who were models and do talks. And uh, I did my talk and John said, why don't you join this amazing group called the Speakers Collective? And uh, I got invited and met Joe and the Speakers Collective and lo and below, behold, that's where I am now and I'm here. So uh, quite a bit of a path there. <laughs> that's like a, a whole life story in yeah. three and a half minutes, which is yeah. just phenomenal. Um, I you. love the fact that you were a model at one point in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I just can yeah. I just take a moment and focus in on that, or do we need to? Yeah, you can. Over? Yeah, I mean, I've I've got I've got grey hair. I call it wisdom highlights. And um, luckily, luckily, um, Pete did it in black and white, so it got my best features. But it's funny because it was the vinyl stuff, and he took a photo of me, what they call digging through vinyl records, yeah. and that was the one that finally. But the pictures were really good because it was like a picture of us what we like doing but it was the other side the mental health side so with anxiety there's a lot of perfectionism so he picked up on perfectionism and that came up as the other picture and, and he sort of designed that so I, i'm really into at the moment creativity with mental health i'm doing a work with some people around the group uh, around creativity i mean there's sarah there I, I hope she don't mind me mentioning she's a tailor and she's doing some amazing stuff with clothes and um we're working together to, to get her talking about that so there's a lot around creativity music art that i think we can draw from and get inspiration from and, and supporting our mental health amazing thank you um so welcome everyone uh, so what we just need to clarify in the context of uh, mentality meets is um that we steve and i will be chatting our way through the the next kind of 20 minutes or so and just talking about uh mental health and mental health journeys and lo and behold the life that we find ourselves in with the uh, current lockdown and how that is impacting on our mental health um so just to help you be aware of yourself really um we don't have any idea of who you are or what your history is of mental health illnesses or where you are in that journey. So at the start, I just wanna be able to say, if you feel like what we are talking about is a little bit more personal and a little bit more real than you're expecting, please ask for help. I've got no problem with you just putting a little private chat into me and just saying, Pete, actually this is triggering some stuff, but also be aware of what support is around you. So through Speakers Collective, we really wanna promote the hub of hope. 
um, which is hubofhope.org. And the amazing thing about Hub of Hope is that you can type in your postcode and it will provide all the mental health support in your local area. Now this is also really important because if you're having a phone conversation with someone on the other side of the country, you can put their postcode in and find the mental health support around them. So it's a fantastic tool, okay? Uh, if you feel that you need to talk to someone on a more urgent process, please don't forget the Samaritans. So the Samaritans is available 24 seven on 116123. OK, so please do give them a call if you need. If you're not too sure about actually phoning someone, then you can pick up your phone and you can text SHOUT to 85258. And what that will do is that will put you through to the SHOUT team and they will organise for someone to get back in contact with you. OK, it's the first ever 24-7 text service uh, for mental health available in the UK. So just some information and some ideas in the context of that. So Steve, sorry, I just wanted to kind of put, put that down um, as a starting point uh, as we talk through this. So um, your, your mental health journey, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, and you were saying is, yeah. is kind of peppered throughout, but certainly anxiety is something that is very real for you. Um, and you coined it as a very easy phrase or very simplistic phrase, and you said, you got, I don't like this phrase, but it, about a fear of the future. Yeah. Um, why, what is it that you don't like about that phrase and, and what do you mean by kind of this, this fear of the future? I suppose it does oversimplify anxiety because it's, it's a complex condition and uh, you know, it comes in different forms and we're all different people and, and, and feel, it, feel it in different ways. But for me, yeah, fear of the future is quite a good way of describing it because um, I, I'm always someone that likes quite a lot of structure, and um, if you if you if there's uncertainty moving forward, that that can be quite difficult to take, yeah, and handle. So that's something I, with all the therapy I've had has helped me a lot, and I'm I'm a lot more flexible. Um, someone sort of I heard the other day something about going back to nature and and like looking at a tree, an oak tree, and how, you know, when adverse things are thrown at it, it sways in its way. So if it's high winds or something like that, it sways the winds. Uh, but if you stand static and stand still, you've got more chance of that tree falling over and breaking. And that was quite a powerful picture for me. And, and that was probably what I used to be like. I was quite comfortable in my own little place, but not being flexible enough to move with it. So anxiety can be exacerbated. My anxiety was exacerbated by the fact that I didn't know what was going, what was the next day, what was happening. Um, so in a way, it's quite interesting because in this current situation, I've really felt quite calm because I've, I've got a structure. I know what the rules are in terms of what we can and can't do. Whereas before, it was always a lot of ruminating on what, what, what do I do next? You know, a lot of procrastination. But now I've got a, little, a lot more structure to it. I feel quite comfortable, which is quite strange. So the restrictions given me the structure. The other thing I think is that um, a lot of people are feeling anxiety and, and the symptoms of anxiety have maybe never felt it before. And I really do feel for them. But in a way, I'm thinking to myself, well, welcome to my world, because this is what I've been going through for quite a while. Yeah. So, you know, it's quite interesting that, that that's calmed me in a sense. But but I do, do feel for other people. So I don't want to start, make that sound as if I'm being quite malicious. No, no, not at all. It's, it's one of the things that I, I picked up on one of our previous chats um, about people who have lived experience of mental health illnesses, are they the privileged few who kind of experienced what we're all experiencing now for the first time um, and have some strategy and some tools with how to cope? Uh, and I was talking with, with Adrian from Speakers Collective and he said, probably the privileged few is, is a little bit overstretching, but certainly having realized that actually what, what we're experiencing now is other people's norm yeah you know? and i think certainly for myself i've i've been really taken aback by my mental health journey over these last four or five weeks now yeah. um and i i don't know what other people's views are but i i can't see it letting up anytime quickly um and so trying to trying to come to an okay place in what is now my norm and it's not normal but it, it 
it's trying to realize that I'm, a, I'm allowed to feel like this, mm. you know, uh, and that's okay. It's, it's not necessarily great, but it is okay. Um, now, another thing which uh, you're talking about is, because um, we were talking about kind of the, the process of going through lockdown into where we are now, yeah. and the fact that yeah. you feel quite settled in this place. Yeah. And that conversations are beginning to move to, well, what about when we come back out the other side yeah. of it? Yeah. Uh, and you were saying that that actually fills you with more worry because it, or more anxiety because yeah. it brings you back to that level of uncertainty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my, my question is, as you are currently in, in this place of feeling fairly okay, what, yeah. what tools or what strategies do you have that help you in that processing of of the next steps i i mean i'll be honest with you i'm not going to deny that i'm i'm not always calm it is there is a bit a roller coaster of emotions and uh sort of certain things show for me I, i've got psoriasis and it's like my alarm bell that when that starts flaring that i know that the anxiety is kicking in but what that does help me to do it is an alarm bell and it allows me to pay attention to my feelings more so one of the things that I've been doing a lot of recently, just sitting with my feelings and, and actually not trying to fight them by sort of distraction or sort of, a, you know, things like addictive type behavior, but actually just sitting with them and being where I am at the moment. So a lot of, lot of stuff about grounding myself where I currently am and not taking myself too far forward. Also not going backwards either. So it's very much like the sort of mindfulness sort of approach that's helped me a lot. Um, the other thing, Peter, we talked about was running, and I do a lot of running every, every other day. I do a sort of short run, and the runs have been really different lately because I think before I used to run, and it was all about times and distance and doing it all quickly, so it was like an autopilot type run. But now I'm noticing I'm slowing down and actually noticing things, and it's as if slowing down does help me, and I'll probably not realise that. And I think it, quite quite a good analogy for other people you know that perhaps we've all been on autopilot run doing that run quickly and not noticing the good things around us so i've been trying to do that too no brilliant um so just coming back to everyone in the the room uh i say in the room welcome to my room um can i ask you at this time kind of where, as you think about where you are now are you feeling settled or unsettled Okay, settled or unsettled, and also as you look to where kind of the, the, the process is going and, and that whole returning to whatever it is that we're returning to, does that feeling fill you with excitement? Or what, what is the feeling that fills you with? Okay, let's go for that. Um, so how are you feeling now and how do you feel about what is ahead of us in the future and how does that make you feel okay so on your chat bars uh go for it and start uh, writing down some stuff that would be brilliant um steve i have another question for you yeah um because a couple of weeks back uh you had the the experience of someone that you know not not a, a family member but somebody that that you know who died from covid yeah. um and i've noticed in the in the news over the last few days, that the, the news presenters are trying to repersonalize numbers yeah. because the numbers of deaths are, are, are con continually going up and we can sometimes see numbers, but not people. And I just wanna ask you about how it, how it affected you when it was somebody that you knew yeah i mean it was quite early on as well and uh, i think there was two things that really hit me one is it's someone i had spoken to and and had some form of connection with so it, it made it it made it what i'll call real with a capital r it isn't just people it, there's not people in a room where you, they're faceless this was a real person who also was so so let me give you the background it's probably easier to explain it so I'm a, I'm a, a, for my sins, I'm a fan of Charlton Athletic Football Club, which are in the championship in, in, in the English league. And um, there's a guy called Seb Lewis who, who passed away and he, he was 38 years of age. But Seb was quite a character in the, in the club because uh, he'd been to every home and away game over the past few years. I think there was 1,076 games he'd been to. So everyone knew him from that crowd of, you know, 20, 15, 20,000 fans. 
there was a lot of people that had some form of connection with him. And I think um, what they've done, there was a, there's a wall where they've actually put, uh, they did a, graf uh, not a graffiti, some sort of stencil painting. They put his name on there, which is, is quite nice. And I think they're talking about a statue. But it really hit home to me that these are real people with real families. And it's not just the individual, but all the people around them. So, and you're, you're right, with all these numbers banded around, numbers don't mean people, but you, you've got to really consider, and it really hit me that it was a real person and, and someone that, that, that there was a connection with, and they've got connections with lots of other people too. And I know it hit a lot of the fans because the, there was message boards that were, you know, going crazy with, with, with um, you know, memorials and uh, recollections of him. So yeah, really, it, and there was a sadness there, a big sadness, mm. you know, I mean, last year I had a lot of grief and, and it, 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 was, it felt nearly akin to that. I think it's something that is certainly, uh, going back to the question, I'm going to read out some of these questions, uh, uh, statements that are coming out because they're, they're brilliant. But certainly one thing which I'm aware of is that in the returning to work, we may find work colleagues who have lost people close yeah. to them. Yeah. Um, and one thing which I was, I was on a call with someone the other day and they said, um, but when you've had a really rough time, when you've been going through a really hard time, people don't want to share the small things anymore. It's almost like they're only allowed to share if it's in line with the same kind of uh, experience I'm, I've been having. Um, and I find that really interesting that we can, could get to a point where we try and outdo each other on how bad it's been, yeah. you know? Uh, and it's like, oh yeah, I, a friend of mine suffered with, with uh, COVID and they said, well, I suffered with COVID. It's like, well, I suffered with it twice. And well, I, mm. and it's almost like we, we try and outdo each other mm. without allowing people just to acknowledge that, you know what, I, I just had some really hard times <laughs> and allowing it to, to acknowledge that it's different for all of us. Uh, and that grieving process as well of, um, allowing people to to be able to grieve and how hard that must be at the moment in the context of not being able to uh see people and not being able mm. to to grieve effectively mm. um so a friend of mine uh one of her i think it was her brother-in-law or, or again somebody close uh who died at the age of 36 with a young family and all of a sudden it just comes that much closer um to us and I don't want to see the numbers as just numbers. I want to, I want to remember the people and the, yeah. the people that it's affecting. So let's just kind of go back over some of these uh, messages about how are you feeling at the moment and how are you feeling about the future? Because it is a whole mix um, of people and it's about kind of worried that I'm going to get too busy too quickly in going back to whatever the, the, the process is, if we, if we can say going back. I don't know if, if going back is even the right phrase anymore. Currently feeling quite mellow, but also feeling a little bit reticent about what the future might bring. Uh, feeling settled, but looking forward to being more social. Uh, and then it comes down to feeling good now, but apprehensive about getting back to the workplace and what uh, anxiety it may trigger. Um, and then quite settled now, uh, but getting used to this. So we've kind of gone through that honeymoon period of, oh, okay, this is all new to, oh, this is going on for a little bit longer to actually settling into it. I, I totally get that. Um, and then uh, I don't know who, Chris is, who this quiz is, but feeling unsettled, desperately excited about society restarting and giving everyone hugs. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to giving everyone hugs. Um, so uh, Leonie's on the, on the chat, who is my next door neighbor. And I have warned her that as soon as we're allowed to, I'm going over and just going to go and give her a hug. Uh, and I think she's okay with that. I'm not too sure about her husband, but we'll see how it goes. Um, and I think kind of the, the other thing that, um, so I'm, I'm reasonably separate at the moment, uh, probably due to my own mental health journey. Um, bizarrely, bizarrely, mildly excited about what's going to come. And I think this is, this is also important is to, is to realize that what we, what we have ahead of us has a, a real edge of excitement to it as well. So it's not all the kind of doom and gloom, but uh, it's trying to hold it in the conversation of, of our mental health journey. And Steve, when you look at the future or when you kind of look into what could be, because I mean, listening to your story, 
you have so much experience of of a recovery journey on mental health and, and positivity within it do you find that you are able to see the excitement or are you yeah. constantly if you like seeing the shadow of what it could be and and that gray area does that make sense yeah it does i mean one of the things i did in therapy was there was an old steve and a new steve and it was like a, a, a break i call it my breakdown was a breakthrough yeah so now i only look on look try and put, look through the lens of the the new steve yeah so i think there's a chinese saying about when when you get things you know crisis there's, it's, there's always a ch chance of danger or opportunity and I, my new steve looks at the opportunity now so i'm thinking with the people i'm working with what can we do to, to, to add value in the future. So it's really an opportunity. But if you'd have asked the old Steve, I would have been catast catastrophizing, what's the word, catastrophizing about yes. um, anything and everything at the moment. It would be every which way. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that are really, you know, struggling at the moment with worrying about the finances. Well, I would have been, the old Steve would have been looking at every penny on the, on the spreadsheets being, mm -hmm. with the accountancy out on. But now I'm just saying, well, what will be will be. I can only really worry about what I can control at the moment. And that's what I'm focusing on. But I certainly know the old Steve would have been looking at every in inch of the news, uh, following everything that was going on. And, and that wouldn't have helped me. But at that time, that was the way I was. Mm. And, so, and, and it's learning from your experiences. So I, I feel that, that, that I, I learned a hell of a lot. I'm still always learning. We're always learning. But that, that experience helped me. So out of bad comes good. One of the things that I um, use in the context of my um, mental health training is the idea or, or context of fear, so F-E-A-R, being a false expectation that appears real. So it's not real, no. but it's what I think is going to become the reality. Yeah. Um, and so kind of this, this false expectation that appears real and how easy it is to allow that uh, false perspective to then stop us from actually even trying something or, or allowing us to, to move forward. And I, I, I found that really helpful when someone explained it to me in that context, that anxiety is this false expectation. Because if it was real, yeah. then it's a good thing to be anxious about. Hmm. But if there isn't this... this realm of reality to it and i'm just forming all of these uh perspectives in my own head then that can sometimes cripple us from actually being able to take that next step yeah. or to to see the breakthroughs in itself mm -hmm. now steve uh, we're coming to the end of our time it's it's 328 already yeah. um so we've got two minutes left really of our time together and earlier you were talking about creativity being a really yeah. good tool in the yeah. context of your mental health journey uh, and yeah. you're talking about music and fashion and uh, yeah. art and is there any anywhere or anything that you would like to encourage us to do this week in the context of our mental health and creativity yeah it's really funny because i was just talking to someone just this minute and we were talking about mental health awareness week now being about kindness yeah yeah so something i, I think people could do is perhaps make a card uh, with either paper or, or anything you've got and post it to someone that perhaps you've not been in contact with or you can show a bit of kindness to. Yes. So, and, and you know, put it in an envelope, post it. And, that, and you know, that it doesn't, doesn't have to be, a, you know, Picasso or anything like that. Just doing something like that, that that can help. And it's simple, something you can do at home and, and it may make a hell of a lot of difference to someone else. I've, and, I've and hopefully it'll warm your heart as well. Yeah. yeah, and I've loved on the on the walks that I've been doing with my with my kids uh, and spotting the rainbows uh, that people yeah. have been putting up, Fantastic. spotting the teddy bears that people have been putting up, um, spotting the the Easter eggs that kind of people have been uh, putting in their windows, and and just allowing uh, an extra excitement just in kind of exploring things and finding things uh, and allowing my kids to kind of take notice of what mm -hmm. else is going on, and like you say, with your running just being able to slow things down uh, yeah. and take notice of the environment around us. Yeah. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, I just wanna say thank you so much for your time today. We are at 3.30, which means that I have to officially say we are at the end of our time together for Mentality Meets. Uh, and if you need to log off and sign off, then please do feel free to do so. This is as 
uh, official an ending as you're going to get for the 3.30 time. Um, but I think Steve and I are just going to wrap things up just a little bit um, before uh, everyone has to leave. So if you are able to, to stick around for a little bit of time, that'd be amazing. Um, so Steve, are there any other final thoughts that you have for everybody on the chat today? Um, yeah, I, I mean, just be kind to yourself. I mean, we're talking about kindness in a few weeks time, but I think we're our own worst critics. And I, that was something I'm still guilty of. I'm not going to say that I'm perfect. It still creeps in. But really be kind to yourself during this time. You know, if you do, if you do get signs of things that, that are not comfortable for you, just sit with them. Don't, don't try and uh, fight them because that's not going to help you at all. Um, you know, just be kind and gentle. And, and self-compassion is really, really powerful if you can do it and really be honest with yourself and, 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 and do that and help yourself. Be kind. You're lovely people, all of you, but sometimes you have to tell yourself that. Amazing. Steve, thank you so much. Um, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, just want to say thanks again for your time today. Uh, I've been Pete Larkham. This man has been Steve Loft. Uh, amazing story, amazing journey. You guys have been absolutely awesome for, for logging in. So thank you so much once again. Uh, we will thank be back for Mentality Meets on Monday. Uh, again, 11 o'clock. So if you are new to this, we do this every Monday at 11 and every Thursday at 3. Uh, do shout about it, get as many people involved as you can because uh, I am thoroughly appreciating the wisdom and insight that I'm getting from, from these chats. So Steve, for today, thank you so much to you. Thank you very much. And everybody you, else, everyone. take care, God bless, and bye-bye now. Bye.